Sign up for the Cigars and Sea Stories monthly giveaway. It's simple. All you need to do is go to cigarsandseastories.com, sign up for our newsletter by clicking subscribe. When you do, you're going to be given a referral link to share with your network. Every time you share, you earn points. Anytime one of your friends subscribes, you earn an extra five points. Whoever has the most shares and the most points at the end of the month wins the gift package. So subscribe right now at cigarsandseastories.com. From the halls of Montezuma to the shores of Tripoli, we fight our country's battles in the air on land and sea. First to fight for right and freedom and to keep on this episode of Cigars and Sea Stories, Bennett and Mike are sitting down to talk about watches. Watches. Mother, motherfuckers. You know what I'm talking about. See, I love it, but I love it. I love it how we do these episodes. I just want to tell the audience this is what's Absolutely. amazing. Is I let I let Michael choose a topic and I that I know nothing. I, I'm going in blind. <laughs> and it's freaking awesome. I love it. But watches is such a key piece of gear. A watch, a wristwatch. That's what I mean. What kind of wristwatch do you have? Are you wearing a wristwatch right now? If you are, immediately comment in the comment section section on cigarsandseastories.com. Maybe you're part of the Cigars and Sea Stories listener group. You have a favorite watch that you happen to use. I'm a I'm a G-Shock guy. Now I wore an Iron Man overseas and a Sunto. I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, good watches all the way around. But I gotta say, man, I'm pretty impressed with the G-Shock, you know? Now, I had a G-Shock as well when I was in. Yeah. And that thing lasted me, like, 11 years, 10 years. Yeah. It was a long time. I had to get a replacement band for it, um, because that shit, like, dry rotted out. But then I just got one of those, like, Velcro, like, OD green Velcro, cheap ass things and that lasted another like five years it was awesome okay so (laughs) so this is a true story right at the px on mcrd san diego they sold watches um not excuse me not on mcrd san diego in camp pendleton they sold watches in that px and we had to do a px run in the middle of it now normally you bring everything that you need for up north you're all set like all that gouge comes with you but for some reason they had to run over and they had to grab something can't even remember what it was This kid in my platoon bought one of those watches with the nylon green band and a very simple circular face, right? Comes trotting back into the squad bay with this fucking watch on his wrist. He made it about two steps in the door before the drill instructor was like, what is that? And he's like, good, you want to tell time? You're on my time. And he brings him over to the quarter deck, takes his wristwatch off, sets it down in front of him, just makes him push until he's tired. I mean, it was like, oh, man, that is the dumbest thing you could have done. Why? What do you need a wristwatch in boot camp for? Nothing, because, yeah, nothing. Nothing. You just, you just do what that guy you says. Where you go. Right. So right. Just do what that guy. Hey, the guy with the shiny belt buckle and the fucking hat. Right. Just listen to what he tells you to do and fucking do it. I kept coming up with scenarios, right? Like now, don't get me wrong. The guide. I remember the guide had to go and bang on the hatch and be like, "It's zero seven. Time on deck is zero seven thirty. Because remember, there was a wristwatch on the podium near the front hatch. Yes. Right. Well, they, we had. A, we actually had a clock we had like one of those uh the big one yeah the big you know like the 12 inch freaking platter maybe government fucking clock you know maybe we did too but i remember it was Firewatch woke up guide guide walked over bang 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 warning sir time on deck is right and then you would start your day i fucking hated doing oh that I, shit it's in the morning. so stupid uh, and uh so stupid but i i was the asshole that had to do it because you're a guide for the first half of boot camp it's fucking so <laughs> stupid <laughs> So fucking stupid, man. And then, I felt so dumb. Remember the house mouse? Oh, of course. Whatever the fuck they... All right, so that guy... I remember him having to do like when he would be cleaning every fucking time he'd walk out to ask he'd he'd have to slap on the shit and then ask permission to enter again. Yeah. It's like, dude, shut the fuck up. Yeah. Just stay in there and do your fucking (laughs) job. Finish it up so I don't have to listen to your ass. See screaming. And our house mouse literally was a he looked like a fucking mouse. Like a little with chocolate little, all over his lips because he's eating shit out of Puerto the trash Rican can. Dude. The little Puerto Rican dude. God, what was his last name? Damn it, I can't remember. But he was tiny. This fucking guy. 
He did. He looked like a fucking mouse. Oh my god. Oh my god. So I'm sorry, funny, I'm dying funny, a little bit over here. Funny I'm thinking, watch story. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. You can go ahead. No, no, no. no I just watch story. It, it was. It's funny because I remember our drill instructors keeping our any mouse marines in the wall locker, and then we would all leave, and then they were authorized to come out and tighten everything up because we had like final inspection that was coming through or something, and we were going to bring them back T rats. It was like this whole, you know how it is. There's like this game within a game in boot camp. Like who needs that many canteens? But for some reason, we're always stealing canteens. Oh, it's one of those things. Yeah, absolutely. Especially if like you see another platoon like leaves their shit laying around or something. Oh yeah. We would go steal all that shit. Oh yeah, that's ours now. You would hear the fucking yeah, you would hear the drill instructor. He'd be like looking out the window on the quarter deck. Right. And you would hear him he would yell for like four names, right? Right. And he'd be like, You see that shit laying on the deck out there? Fucking go get it. <laughs> and he'd be the fucking guys would go run you know, Spring. running like bats out of hell and uh there's times when they would grab shit and run start running back and they're fucking getting chased <laughs> yeah it was just fucking ridiculous i hope dude. my watch doesn't so fall off yeah so uh, really good funny. Times. so i had a fucking uh all right so this g-shock watch this is a this is a watch i bought in the when i was in the marine corps yeah right yep like one of the original g-shocks oh yeah so all i had it I had just gotten it. We, I had just graduated from uh, the recon uh, in doc program, right? Mm-hmm. And so I was like a real recon marine at that point, right? And so we, I got assigned to my team, yada yada yada. Two months into this, we get tasked to go out and play op four for the. Now I've talked about these British Royal Marines before. But we were tasked to play Op 4 for the British Royal Marines that were on Camp Lejeune doing exercises, right? Right. So we had gone out, and we were shadowing this, like, battalion-sized force, right? Well, (laughs) they were, like, set up next to, like, the swamp. Well, not next to it, but pretty close to the swamp. But it it got pushed out to where their LPOPs were probably within, like, I don't know. 25 meters, like not very far yeah. of a harbor site that we had set up. So we could do double duty, kind of like get some shut eye because we were exhausted after like five days of straight operation shadowing these guys. Right. And, and run a, like an LPOP right off of them. Right. Right. Well, stupid ass Lance Corporal Tanton uh, decides something. <laughs> Somehow my G Shock alarm no. got turned off. Like the like the silent part mm-hmm. got turned off. Yep. So it's literally like yeah, like five AM. Sun is just starting to like peek its little head above the, the skyline, right? Yeah. And my fucking alarm <laughs> goes off, dude. And I hear <laughs> I hear I'm like dude, uh, I hear dee, dee, all of a sudden, dee, dee, my fucking dee. team leader hit me so hard, dude. My, t- I, I, wow, it's the second <laughs> hardest I've ever been hit. The oh, first hardest, the first, the first, the first hardest. Oh yeah, it's such a the dumb. The first hardest move. I ever got hit was by a chick. By the way, just saying. Th- that's the story I think Tina. I told. <laughs> I think I told that story. The only chick I've ever hit. <laughs> But anyway, we, we won't go into that. It was self-defense. It was self-defense, by the way, so That's I don't such care. such a great story. <laughs> it is a great story. And I don't you know if I've told anybody. it on the podcast, but I'll tell oh it again another God. day. Not today. So, second hardest I've ever been hit. Like, right in the shoulder. Like, my arm went completely dead, dude. Like, <laughs> oh, fuck. Like, I can't even. <laughs> Hurt so bad. Beep, Hurt beep, so bad. Beep, beep, and beep, beep. he was like, yeah. what the fuck? Fucking what the fuck? And and as soon as he starts cussing at me, whisper cussing, so it's not so bad. Right. All of a sudden you we hear we we hear there's fucking people over there. You know, like we can hear the LP OP talking. Right. And they get on the fucking radio. Next thing you know, there's like a platoon size element. <laughs> no. Like a platoon size element coming at us. Uh. We can see them, but they can't see us. Because it's that, it's that, you know, it's the murky, milky right. before twilight time. Right. Um, 
so we actually pop our fucking nod like one of the guys pops his nods on yeah. and we we can see outlines that he's like exactly telling us what's coming and we all just kind of like you know we've got our our blanks ready and all of our shit right and uh we we're able to actually fan out in a, you know, like a seven man line yeah waiting for them and we basically were able to ambush their ass yeah scare the fuck out of them <laughs> but it was all because of my g-shock fucking alarm went off <laughs> oh, oh, fuck. Dude. I don't, and I, then we fucking yeah. we we unloaded magazines and fucking ran oh my god oh that's fucking so ran good. it was so bad it was good but it was bad dude i never i my entire the rest of my marine corps career i always that always came up every oh, yeah. time we drank every time we fucking drank that came up <laughs> Remember that time your watch went off when we were in the Remember that time your watch went off? And luckily it wasn't like a real situation. Thank (laughs) Thank God. God, Yeah. But, but, oh my God, man. Oh God, that's so good. Bad. All fucking bad. That is so good. Oof, God. I'm actually, I kind of think about, I still feel that punch (laughs) in my right shoulder. (laughs) Caught me like, you know how, oh man. So if you feel your shoulder and you know, like the bone, like on the back side of your shoulder, like where your delt, like yeah. where your shoulder comes together, there's that bone right there. Yeah. Oh, dude, he caught me right on that thing. I swear to God, he chipped it. No bueno. He hit me so fucking hard. Oh my god. It was god. so bad. You know, it was funny because I've had I've had a watch alarm go off. Luckily, I was in training. Also, I was in DM school. But we were in a hide, and I mean, they weren't 25 meters away. I'll tell you that much. But beep beep. Beep beep. So it's going off, and I'm like, oh. So I shut it off, and uh, my spotter, he and I were, so we had pushed all the way out and around on the left flank, and we were doing this observation on a parking lot where known enemy combatants were doing exchange of firearms. It was basically like a black market that we needed to have OBS on, right? And it's a training yep. scenario. But we were out in the bush all the way over on this left flank, and we had, I think, two men in support. Two, yeah, it was two in security that were off the tree line. They weren't even, I don't want to say that they weren't doing anything, but they weren't actively observing as we were. They were basically that support echelon, a gatwa that we could return to. You know what I mean? And uh, <laughs> so anyway, my alarm goes off. I'm like, sweet. And Tony's like, what? What's going on? I'm like, I just made sergeant. And out of this bush, you know, it's one in the morning, or no, it was midnight is why the alarm is going off. Out of this bush, essentially, down and to the right, I see this little fisted hand come up. And I'm like, pound it. Holy shit. <laughs> I'm pound it. <laughs> just like, hey, man, you picked up. All right, cool. And then we went back to observing, you know, I mean, it's it's not like I was going to rack out anytime soon. <laughs> so. Right. That's funny. But, but that was one of those to where we definitely didn't get caught. It was just like, why is this alarm set again? Oh, yeah, I'm going to pick up Sergeant. That was pretty cool. That was um, pretty cool. Yeah, so then after that incident, I went to the PX um, there on Mainside Lejeune. 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 And bought a old school just hand watch. Like the... the uh, um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a pocket you know, watch. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. Not a pocket watch. The uh, Just the ones. It's just a regular analog watch. Yeah. No alarms on it. No nothing. Gotcha. I think they sold them for like $6. Yep. And that's basically what they were. It was like a field watch. Yeah. So I, I still had the G-Shock. I just never wore it out in the field anymore. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so now when I went into the Army, I put it on again because i basically broke the alarm i i like somehow was able to completely disable it and never had to worry about that fucking thing making noise again um (laughs) and i can't remember how i did it uh somebody had a trick some kind of hack that i was able to do and uh yeah so anyway but funny shit but i still actually i still have um in my like little uh you know crate of yeah my i still have the um the analog one the the regular hand hand uh old school watch i actually still have that watch well then that's (laughs) You know, I'm sure a lot of you who are listening have comments. You've got your own little piece of gear and a keepsake. By all means, comment comment on social media if you're not familiar with Cigars and Sea Stories listeners group. Uh, that's where the Cool Kid Club is. So you might you might want to get in the know. So check that out on Facebook. But uh, one of the reasons why 
well, the reason why I wanted to have this episode is because I was rummaging around through some of my keepsakes and I pulled out that Iron Man watch and it's broken now. I mean, God only knows what I've done to that thing, but it still has little smudges of cami paint on it. That, oh yeah, man. That That's just didn't awesome. come off. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do. And it's, and it's all I like ground into the face. Yeah. Yeah. I have a uh, K bar, uh, sheath that there's fucking ground uh like uh it's not the od green green it's the other green yeah <clears throat> like it's it's ground into the stitching mm-hmm. yep. you know that leather stitching around the outside it's yeah. ground into that on one spot it's, it's stuck. <laughs> it won't come out yeah and i've tried it just won't come out uh, it's a battle scare <laughs> that in the <coughs> <laughs> Speaking of my keepsakes too, I have uh, two of those old school cami sticks the the ones that you had to put on with bug spray. Oh yeah, um, I have two of those. They're the loom and the <laughs> like gray or whatever color they, it was. Yep. Um, and I the fucking thing still works. Jesus. I tested it. I pulled it out and put a little baby oil on my on the back of my hand. Yeah. Shit came out like it was like it was brand new, bro. Jesus. Gotta love like, it. What's the shelf life on that shit, obviously? Right. Shit's from like Vietnam anyway. Right. Right. When I got it. This is like ninety <laughs> I got that shit in like ninety six. Oh man, that's excellent. Isn't that crazy? And it still works. You know, so. I'll I'll tell you what wound up. I don't want to say that it replaced my watch, but I wore a wrist Garmin, you know, a wrist GPS. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm pretty sure they had just they had just come out with them. We didn't have them in the fleet yet. Uh, and I was like, screw it, man. I'm going to get one of those things. I don't even care. Gonna... Yeah, those things were expensive as fuck back then. I, if, you're, if you're on active duty or a reservist and you're not writing this shit off on the taxes. You're if, wrong. If you're buying gear for your job and you're not itemizing that on your taxes, absolutely you're wrong. And people are like, well, I can itemize my haircuts because it's needed for my... Okay, go for it. If you think yeah. that you make enough... If you think that your haircuts cost enough to where it's a tax deduction, <laughs> sure, go for it. But when you go out and you buy a, I mean, I bought the thing for I think two hundred dollars. That was um that I itemized that on my taxes. I definitely yeah. did. Yeah, yeah. Anything else that was purchased? Yeah, but see, the problem is, is everyone would go get the free tax preparation on base, and uh, they wouldn't itemize shit. Well, right, they would give me an itemized sheet. Right. Yeah. What do, What do you feel you can itemize, and I would fill that bitch up. <laughs> and be like, here, and I, well, I never paid federal taxes when I was in the military. I was always in too low of a tax bracket, essentially. Yep. Um, I think I only paid state taxes once, so itemized that shit. But Garmin Wrist GPS, which has saved many lives, because you can get a 10-digit grid for where you're exactly at, and that immediately goes into yep. your nine line. But, you know, it's got a watch function on it. And I trusted that the time was accurate on there. But more often than not, I would go into the COC, you know, where the Julians are and stuff like that. And I'd find I'd figure out exactly what's on Greenwich or, you know, on Zulu or whatever. So that way I could sync to it. But then I would sync my Garmin. I'd sync my wristwatch and I'd go in there once a week to make sure that they were still in sync. But I was that I was that kind of guy, man. It was like, wait a minute, by this not not by this time, we're supposed to be at that checkpoint. I, that's not, I wasn't that guy. It was, if we didn't hit this area, so to speak, by a certain time, we could miss a given target moving through that area. Right. And so, anyway, I, I had that. And on the Afghans, it was funny also, because I saw a picture of the Afghans, and a lot of them, they can't read or write, they can't tell time. They wear watches as, you know, as decoration. <coughs> Yep. As bracelets. And they trade them and they barter them around and other stuff like that. And I'm like, all of your watches are on different times. I mean, it's kind of like the guy who's standing there in the trench coat, whips it open, and he's got everything you could buy. Plus, he's flashing you. But, uh, <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. And so, anyway, watches is just such an extraordinarily important and useful piece of gear. It is. Well, now, <clears throat> so, th- so since I've 
since we've been out and even while i was in you always have that guy who's like a watch nerd you know what i mean oh yeah so like i had a friend who literally like collected watches like this fucking guy probably had at any given time he had a dozen watches some of which were very expensive very like i don't know the damn brands other than like rolex and like tag what is it tag Hauer or whatever the fucking name is i don't know um i or like you know you know what i'm talking about i know exactly what you're talking about he so. probably has one of them fancy cases. It looks like a humidor. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. It looks like a humidor, and he had like eight to ten watches in there. Whatever. There you go. Share so, your pictures um, with us, folks. Share those so, pictures. And I know he had like a couple watches that were worth like $1,000 or two. You know, it's like, what Jeez the fuck? Weed. And that's like a cheap Rolex. So whatever. Wow. I don't give a fuck. I never gave a shit. I never wanted to spend my money. Hey, but I don't judge. You know, different strokes are different folks. I do have a nice watch um, that my kids bought for me, my wife and kids bought for me, but I only wear it like, you know, when I put a suit on, basically. Oh, yeah. So so I'll pop that watch on like whenever I go to a wedding or whatever. So it's very, you know, but it, I have to wear it around every once in a while because it's one of those uh, ones that is wound by the kinetic movement or whatever. Yep. It's a, so, um, I know what you're talking about. It's a citizen's. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I mean, it's like a $500 watch, but yeah. I'm like, I'm not wearing that shit every day. I'll fucking break it. Right. Exactly. So I live yeah, in life. It's still, still in pristine condition. And I only wear it like, I don't know, probably like once a month. And uh, it's cool. I like it. Right. But, but I don't watch, wear a watch every day. I have my cell phone for that. Yeah. I used to wear a watch. I just don't. I, st- I still find myself strapping on the G-Shock every morning. I, well, no, I just don't go there, man. I was actually the guy, when I was in the field or overseas, I just didn't take my watch off. I would sleep with it on. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, I think I got in that habit of, well, I think I got in that habit as a, as a patrol leader because everything is time-oriented, at least when you're going to start your patrol, it's always time-oriented. I've never, I don't think I've ever had a patrol where it's like, oh, you've got to make time. That's never, mission always has priority. Time has priority if if an HVT is there. So, like, time on target matters. Right. But not time in between the checkpoints. It took you 20 minutes to get from checkpoint one to two. What are you doing out there on patrol? Oh, I don't know. My fucking job? What are you talking about? Like, what if I decide that I don't want to go to that next checkpoint and I deviate the route? I'm the patrol leader, ass. You can't time how long it takes in between checkpoints. <laughs> so, anyway. You know, but I'm the guy, I just, even though I've got clocks all over the place and stuff, I'm still the guy that just rocks a watch. I don't know why. But it's never, Hmm. I had a flashy one for a little while. You know, it was something to where, oh, sure, I know that this is going to break at some point in time, which it did. Um, And then, yeah, I mean, 90% of the time, if you see me walking around out in town, I don't even have a watch. You know, because I'm I'm one of those guys where it's like, if I'm in your place of business or something, I don't have anything else to do. I'm here for you. (laughs) And that's the whole point. Yeah. You know, and then it's like, oh, wow, it's, oh, shit, it's 3.30. All right, I got to get out of here. Um, Right. But it's just, it's totally different now, you know, and I... And I see it, especially because we're working a lot within the skilled labor market with five paragraph. And if you're a contractor, if you're interested in homeowner uh, or excuse me, home repair, home maintenance, a lot of those different things, check out five paragraph. We've tightened it up specifically towards that skilled labor market. (laughs) Excuse me. But it's funny how, you know, I mean, it's just it's very much so akin to our time and service, the skilled labor and the contractor you know, business and how they hop in the truck every day, they go outside the wire, you know, never, never had the same situation. And I think people, uh, well, I know for a fact that people shy away from that because there's not, you you can't really, you can't do a spreadsheet on what you're going to do today. You know, it's all, it's, it's based on, you know, what's necessary, but you're probably not going to have the same day twice. And, uh, yeah, it's funny because I'm around those folks. It's very much so a tactical lifestyle uh, in CONUS, or at least that's the closest to a tactical lifestyle that I found, other than law enforcement or first responders or something along those lines. Um, but it's it's interesting because I was talking with a couple of these contractors recently when we were in Charlotte, the Hokoa headquarters, and it, it dude, it's like setting up a Humvee. 
it's just like setting up any other truck. You know, you have your TO that needs to be in there and what your inventory is going to be for any given scenario. And poof, you could be out the door because there's a referral. I mean, it's kind of like the closest QRF I found. So, but it was interesting though, because a lot of us had the same gear. I was like, oh, that guy's rocking G-Shock. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I used to have a Sunto, you know, and stuff like that. And they make good watches too. They're much more tactically oriented. Um, but yeah, anyway, that lifestyle where it's like, yeah, I don't have, I don't have one of those fancy wrist things. You know, it's, it's, I'm going to break that and beat it up and hard work an individual and all of that other stuff. I think that's the other reason why I rock the G-Shock. Like if I go to a networking event and I'm going to be wearing, you know, a, a, like a jacket and a button down, blah, blah, blah. Like I can hop in to any uniform. That doesn't matter. Um, but I purposely rock that G-Shock as like a, like this is where it come from. You know what I mean? Maybe that sounds dorky, but you know, it's like, well, hey, uh, yeah, it's not fancy. It's because, that's, yeah. you know. Right. Well, I was slaying bodies and now I'm at a networking event. What the fuck am I doing with my life? so factoid of the day the watch was invented basically um in the 16th century so the 1500s jesus uh yeah and basically from then from that time all the way to the 20th century right the 1900s um watches were all mechanical devices and you had to wind them right clocks watches all of it uh and and so the technology never really i mean watches would last longer because the main spring you know when you wind up a watch it tightens up a main spring Mm -hmm. right and that's how that's the mechanics of it and as that spring loosens um it that's where the energy comes from right so I mean, manual watches are still very popular, according to uh, according to this watch thing. But um, and I would agree, just because there's something cool, like I mean, watchmakers, like that shit's hard. Uh, yeah. Like the engineering going into that fucking thing is amazing. Right. So, but yeah, all the way back in the 1500s, and actually there was like a. Uh, And so that was like the actual watch. Now, timepieces go back a little farther to like the 1400s where they had spring uh, driven clocks. Yeah. Go go that far back. Wow. Like like literally what? 600 years now. Yeah. Well, I mean, or so I think that I think that's crazy because I mean, that's light years ahead of the lighter you know the pocket flick lighter or the wick lighter yeah, right when it came out and fire arguably is more important huh that's weird oh of course it is so anyway I mean, yeah yeah that's the factoid of the day God, that's fascinating so and then we had a court that my like courts you know courts watches are used now for the most part um and i don't know this the mechanism behind all that but uh those weren't really mainstream mm-hmm um until like the 1960s that's when it, it they were invented so nice. which is the vibrating quartz watch so yeah as the energy proved a radical departure for the industry so yeah uh, well there you go folks factoid of the day thanks for much thank you so much for listening to another episode of cigars and sea stories please leave us those comments on facebook we're on twitter we're on instagram and uh by all means hit us up tell us what you think and of course it was it was invented in germany Ah, yes. German German engineering. They make the crowds make good stuff. What can I say? Yeah, Nuremberg ah. and Augs, Augsburg. Nice. I wonder if anybody ever looked at the Nazis and was like, "Your time is up." Your and time real- is up. And fuckers. realized the irony that they were bringing to the equation. That's pretty good. And they were originally called clock watches. Oh, that's a suitable <laughs> name, right? <laughs> <laughs> that are funny. Well, there you go, so. folks. That's why you listen all the way to the end of the episode. Thanks so much. Thank you to our collaborators, Spartan Media, Heroes Media Group, McPherson Marketing, VeteransList.us, Hakoa, who is doing great things together with Five Paragraph. It's amazing what's happening out there. So if you are interested in all that we have to provide, say, for instance, you need a website or marketing or you want to get noticed uh, by folks like Hakoa, be sure to join VeteransList.us. And if you're so inclined to get a featured membership, you can get it half off by entering in discount code Cigars and C. That's disca- zero. Half off, 50% off. That's right, by entering discount code Cigars and C. So there you go. Check out VeteransList.us. Get a featured membership. Enter in discount code Cigars and C. 
All right. I think that pretty much wraps it up. Bennett, you got any more for these beautiful people? Um, got really good feedback on our last episode. I love people it. thought that shit was hysterical. So. <laughs> good. As it was. Good. So. Well, there you go, folks. Keep on listening. Keep on listening. And on that note, we cue the music. Music.